Okay then, so let's create our first workflow. Then we can talk a little bit about triggers. So on the left-hand side, what I'm, do, what I'm gonna do is just gonna hit the little plus here and I'm gonna give myself a name here, my first workflow, something like that, and hit create. Now that sets us up quite nicely now to then uh, decide how are we going to now build out our actual workflow. Well, the key thing to now know is that we may have a workflow, but we need something to execute that particular workflow. Something needs to happen somewhere in order for us to start invoking all of that, those tasks that we will build with inside our workflow. So, BuildShip has this concept of triggers. Now, triggers can be all different types of triggers. It could be that we will make a request into our workflow, like a REST API request. So for example, in maybe something like Flutterflow or another sort of no-code front-end builder, we're gonna make a, a web request actually into the actual workflow and say, right, now start carrying out those series of tasks. And by the way, when you get to the end, can I have a response, please? back to the front end uh, sort of web application or mobile application or whatever it is that's actually invoking that API call at that particular time. So we need to create a trigger. Now, the great thing about uh, BuildShip is that all the time they are creating more and more triggers, more and more options for us as users, as builders in the BuildShip platform to then use the, or at least execute the actual workflow. So if I hit the add trigger, the key thing to point out is that every workflow can only have one trigger. That's really important. And when you're in this particular screen here, you can see now we've got lots and lots of different triggers here. And of course, as I said, these will build up all the time. So we've got a sort of simple kind of REST API call triggers as an example of the one that I've just said. We kind of can schedule, so we can have these workflows run every sort of minute, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every hour, week, however you would like it. We've got those available to, uh, to us as well. Other options we have is we've got kind of webhooks where that kind of means that when, say for example, Stripe, which is like a, a payment service, when something happens on the Stripe side, we can then invoke an actual workflow here to then kind of use some of the uh, the characteristics of the Stripe webhook. And we can then, uh, for example, it could be like a payment, for example, we could, then, we could then grab hold of the details of that particular payment from the Stripe system. We can make some decisions on it. We could update our database. We could do all kinds of stuff but there's different types of triggers here that will have different types of characteristics that we can hook onto to then use actually within inside our workflow itself so the key thing to point out again and i can't stress this enough is that the build chip team will always be adding more and more triggers here so as more and more triggers get added of course there'll be more and more features that the product will support so do continually check this and do keep track of um, any of the mail outs that the build chip team do because they're always introducing more triggers all the time. So that's just a very, very simple uh, trigger explanation. And we're, of course, we're gonna be using triggers massively during this particular series because of course, without a trigger, we can't execute our workflows.